This is Yehuda Cohen of the Zionist Freedom Alliance, and you are listening to Free Israel Radio. That's right, IsraelNationalRadio.com, the only independent news network in the Middle East. Anyone with comments or questions regarding our program can email us at struggle at IsraelNationalRadio.com. Today is Yud, the 10th day of the month of ER, 5769. Next Monday night and Tuesday will be Lagba Omer, the day on which Rabbi Akiva's warrior students stopped dying during the Bar Kokhba revolt against the Roman Emperor Hadrian. This program will be taking a break for at least a month because I will be traveling to the diaspora on behalf of the Zionist Freedom Alliance. We are in the midst of organizing a special cocktail evening in New York City on May 20th to raise money for the ZFA and any listeners in the New York area who are interested in attending can email info at zfa.org.il Once again, that is info, I-N-F-O at Z as in Zionist, F as in Freedom, a as in alliance dot o r g dot i l tickets are only fifty dollars each and the money will go to a very good cause the zionist freedom alliance which presents the justice of jewish national rights on college campuses throughout north america in the news former united states president jimmy carter's national security advisor brzezinski called on President Barack Obama last week to spell out his own vision for what a two-state solution would look like in the land of Israel. Brzezinski was speaking at a conference on U.S.-Saudi relations sponsored by the New America Foundation and Saudi Arabia's Committee on International Trade. Brzezinski, who advised Obama early in his presidential campaign, is a senior member of the Council on Foreign Relations and a longtime advocate of forcing Israel to surrender territory to the PLO in order to establish a Palestinian Arab state. PLO special forces were praised by an American general this week for becoming what he called the founders of a new Arab country within the land of Israel. The Reuters News Service reported that U.S. Lieutenant General Keith Dayton, who is responsible for providing military training to the PLO, told a Fatah battalion in Tulkaram last week that, and it's a quote, as I look at you, I couldn't be more proud of the fact that you stepped up to be the founders of a Palestinian state, end quote. The American government has spent tens of millions of dollars outfitting the Fatah troops, which it calls special forces, possibly in order to avoid contradicting the Oslo Accords that limit military activities of the PLO. Dayton has been overseeing the training, which takes place primarily in Jordan and at a base built in Jericho with U.S. funds. Weapons for the special forces are provided by Arab countries and armored personnel carriers have been provided by Russia. Dayton told Reuters that the Obama administration plans to expand the training program for 1,500 more PLO troops, creating three more battalions in the next year. Dayton has already supervised the training of 1,600 troops, most of whom are deployed in large Fatah-controlled cities, including Jenin, Shechem, and Hebron. Dayton expressed his intention to accelerate the training program, which would require official approval from the U.S. Congress for more funding that would allow the construction for more PLO military bases in Judea and Samaria. Without defining the cost of the additional training and construction, 
Dayton stated that it will entail more financial support than we have ever had before. Interestingly enough, the funding for the American-trained Fatah Army may come as a result of an APAC initiative this week. APAC, the American-Israel Public Affairs Committee, has traditionally worked against Israel's national interest by lobbying in support of U.S. foreign aid which erodes our national sovereignty and increases our dependency on the United States. I have said before on this program that organizations like APEC are doing no service to the State of Israel but are only reinforcing their own feelings of comfort in America. Anyone who wants to help the State of Israel should work towards our economic independence so that our leadership can start making policy decisions based on the Jewish national interest rather than being influenced by America's foreign policy agenda. Those who work towards increasing or even just continuing American foreign aid to Israel are in reality preventing Israel from achieving political independence. They are working against the Jewish national interest in an effort to simply avoid difficult questions of dual loyalty. These Jews would rather see Israel as America's sidekick than as an independent country because so long as Israel is treated as a vassal to America, influential Jews in the United States feel secure. But if Israel were to become a truly independent country with an independent policy agenda, the Jews who have chosen to live their lives in the exile will suddenly be faced with difficult questions of national loyalty. APAC can best be defined as an anti-Zionist organization. Zionism is the national liberation movement of the Jewish people. The Zionist revolution aspires to achieve self-determination and full political independence for the Jewish nation in the land of Israel. By supporting U.S. foreign aid to Israel, which essentially turns the state of Israel into a recipient of corporate welfare and prevents our people from achieving national independence, APAC has made itself one of the leading anti-Zionist organizations today. And this week, the leaders of APAC are taking their anti-Zionist activities one step further. By championing foreign aid in general, APAC has always ensured that roughly three times as much aid goes to Israel's enemies and potential enemies in the Middle East. But this week, APAC is actively lobbying American congressmen to push for the establishment of a Palestinian Arab state in Judea and Samaria. The people of Israel recently elected a new government to resist foreign pressure and stay loyal to the land of Israel. And until now, our new leadership has been careful to avoid statements endorsing the establishment of a foreign state in our land. APAC's behavior shows that it rejects the democratic choices made by the Israeli people and only cares about their own standing as influential Jews in America. The letters drafted by APAC, which are expected to be signed this week by the majority of U.S. congressmen, also advocate further support for Keith Dayton's training of PLO troops. Both the past Bush administration and the current Obama government declared the training helps the standing and security of Fatah leader Mahmoud Abbas, who is seen by many in the region as a puppet for Washington. Fatah also does not officially recognize the state of Israel, and Abbas reiterated his position last Tuesday that he refused
tenth day of the month of ER, 5769, next Monday night and Tuesday, will be Lag Baomer, the day on which Rabbi Akiva's warrior students stopped dying. This is Yehuda Cohen of the Zionist Freedom Alliance, and you are listening to Free Israel Radio. That's right, Israel National Radio. Dot com, the only independent news network in the Middle East. Anyone with comments? Or questions regarding our program can email us at struggle at israelnationalradio.com. Today is Yud, 